Blog Talk Radio. Always look up, never give up, and you will reach your goals. You're important, you're more than enough. And here she is, your host for Rolling with the Diva, Sabrina Williams. Thank you. Hello, everybody. We're in from Las Vegas, Nevada. It's been a great day for me so far. Well, honestly, if I'm really honest, I have to say, first, let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for another radio show. And thank you, thank you for um, letting people who hear this, who need this, that they would be able to grasp this information from it, take it, and use it in their own lives. Thank you, Lord. All right, you guys. Just want to remind you guys before we start, and I'm saying it in the beginning of the show because I always say it at the end. But remember, 211 in any state of the United States is able to help you find um, resources for low income housing, referrals for food banks, or um, places um, that have um, food for people who are in need of that. Also, remember, um, senior citizens may need referrals for um, Meals on Wheels. Um, there's also, they can give you, I, I was able to help one of my friends um, get a hold of, the, um, give her resources to get in contact with the electric company. Um, and there's neighborhood services, um, centers that can help, and they give her more information like Catholic charities. You know, don't be ashamed to ask for help. We're a community and we're all meant to be together. Um, thank you for listening. And today we're going to cover And it's a series I'm starting, and it's called I Have a Question, God Series. Why do hurt people hurt? We've all been through something or somebody who has hurt hurt you or or somebody you know. This could be from your feelings to some form of revenge, a crime, or something they stole. There are many questions and many, many assumptions why hurt people hurt people. In the Bible and in the psychological world, we can find many stories. However, today on Rolling with the Diva, I'm going to talk to you about um, and discuss how why hurt people hurt people, what to do about it, and how to love people unconditionally. And I'm going to just lay it out there. Sometimes hurt people hurt people and repeat patterns that were put in their lives. For example, this is one that I can think of um, sometimes and not all the time, sometimes, and I'll have to look up the percentage or you can look up the percentage, Sometimes when a child is molested, they will go um, as they grow and molest somebody else. Somebody who was um, attacked and raped as a child, say um, another a boy was attacked, he may um, start attacking girls, um, vice versa. So sometimes we're repeating cycles that was done on us because the help wasn't there or we were too ashamed to talk about it. The one thing I want to point out to you today is you're loved, you're wanted, and what happened to you? on being hurt by somebody else, um, you know, whether it was, you know, rape, molestation, incest that was incest, that was not your fault. You do need to get help if it's if you're still living with that and cannot function. Um, we do function through our hurt, but sometimes it's not proper and we need to learn how to deal with that. Okay, so we are gonna go to um and this is a book that I think this was a book that I studied in college. And I was able to find it on um, Amazon, and it's called Hurt People, Hurt People. That's actually a title of a book. And um, I, re- I think that's the book. I'm trying to see because they have so many on here. Um, but I'll, as I play the music, I'll look for it. But I like this um, one. Um, they share a couple of the um, – pages from it, and I just wanted to share that with you, because sometimes we just think we're alone. And I like this part of they say, just because some people hurt you doesn't mean all people will hurt you. Okay, so um, yeah, I just I just thought that that was interesting. And sometimes in the book, they do give you like a synopsis, but they didn't do that here. Um, but um, let me see what they got here. I hope you guys' day is going well. I had a great Bible study today, and I was really, really happy about it um, with my group. From, I don't go to Crossings, but I'm in a Bible study 
get some women from crossing. So I just thought that it would be um, um, just just really fun to share. We're doing a Beth Moore study, and I'm really, um, really, really excited about that. Love Beth Moore. If you guys don't know know who she is, you guys um, should look her up because she is just a really, really great lady. All right, now we're going to go to reading this part. I was seeing what part I want to read, but I found it. Okay, here we go. Um, and this is from Dr. Sandra D. Wilson. That is the one we read in school. And the, the actual whole title is Hope and Healing for Yourself and Your Relationships. Hurt people hurt people. And this is not just talking about, you know, some of the things I talked about. This could be about, you know, you going to a church or a friendship. It, it, it covers a whole array of things. Hurt people hurt people is more than a clever phrase. It's a sad truth. Hurt people hurt others because these themselves have been hurt. And each one of us has been hurt to one degree or another, as that damages causes us to become defensive and self-protective. We may lash out at others. Hurting becomes a vicious cycle. For instance, when I was a little um, kid, I would get in trouble at home, get a really sort of kind of a lot of whoopings, as they called them in my day, and then I would get upset and take it out on the kids at school. I was angry because my dad had walked away. We were poor, and I um, would take that emotions and anger on other people. But as the book goes on from Dr. Sandra Wilson, Hurt People Hurt People, she says, but God can help us break that cycle. He offers his healing and hope, hope that we will see more clearly how God can use our wounding experiences for good. And I've learned in my life, I really have that. My experiences in life has developed my attitude. And no matter what happens, even though sometimes I was very angry, very upset, I've tried to always have a positive attitude and to try to encourage other people. And through that, many people tell me that I am encouraging to them. I have, you know, I have, <clears throat> excuse me, I have helped them. That's sometimes our story is just not our story. Yeah, we can write the bylines, you know, proverbially, but, there's, there's something more for them. So don't always think it in, a, in the sense of yourself. Um, hope that our scars will one day sing the praises of our living and loving Savior, even as we embrace the reality of choice, change, and transformation. Third, hope that sees in the fragments of broken lives, broken lives, the reflection and triumph of Jesus in the empty tomb. Jesus died for our sins, and he died for his love for us. Jesus is the, is the only all-sufficient healer for hurt people. And for some of you guys, that may be a higher power. Maybe you guys don't have a relation with Jesus and maybe you're in a religion. But we all need something we can call on. And for, for me, it's the Lord Jesus Christ. And you have to have a, a higher power to give that to. And he graciously uses human instruments in his healing work. Yes, God can use other people, even you, even in the midst of all your pain. I've seen many, many men and women who've come through and have been hurt, raped, molested, sexual um, trafficking, and done major things. It is the prayer of this author, which is Dr. Sandra D. Wilson from her book, Hurt People, Hurt People, that our loving God will use this book, now available in large print for clear, easy reading as part of your healing process. Dr. Sandy Wilson knows why hurt people hurt people and how to heal this hurt. She gets right into the heart of these matters in her very insightful and provocative book. It's a must read to anyone who wants to break free from the bondage of unhealed personal hurts. Dr. Chris Thurman, Arthur of Lies, we believe. So that's just a little synopsis of the book. So I I would highly suggest that um, you guys, you know, try to, um, you know, get that book for yourself. We're going to play a song and then we'll be right back.
rolling with the diva on our series i have a question god why do hurt people hurt people and the thing that i read from dr sandy and you guys can go back in the message if you're just going to join us is that hurt people hurt people because one they're hurting and sometimes when we're hurting we don't know how to either seek help come to god even though we may know him or seek god if we don't know him and it just perpetuates the hurt and others get hurt because of it. So how do how do you um, get over that? It's not you never get over it, but you know what I've learned through all the things that's happened to me in my life. You know, going through divorce, broken families, a divorce. Um, you know, lots of things happen in my life. I've moved away from bitterness, and I've learned to forgive because of God, because of Him knowing. And it's taken me years up in the years. This wasn't something I learned at eight or sixteen or you know, you know, or even twenty one or twenty two. It got better and better. But I had to learn to forgive myself first. For instance, um, years ago when I think I was twenty six, I had an abortion. And I've told this story before, and I became very angry, bitter, and I was always just really angry at my boyfriend. Then I later married him, which I don't know if that was really a good idea, even God's plan, but it happened. And I just remember just one day coming to the end of my rope, just tired, angry, crying. And I met a, a wonderful lady. Her name was Tanya Dermit, and she went she went through a study with me on um, abortions and God's forgiveness. And from that point on, I'd always been a person who just tried to love people as they are, but that really, really opened my eyes up to loving more, loving unconditionally. And I just... I don't know. And here's, this is a paraphrase from the Bible. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. The good news, don't forget that we receive forgiveness and in turn should be kind and forgiving to those around us. The Lord has forgiven you, so you must also forgive. And I know that's easier said than done. Let me tell you a little secret I a long time ago, ladies and gentlemen. 
Forgiveness is not for them, the person who has offended you, hurt you, used you, um, sold you into um, slavery for sexual, et cetera. It's for you. You don't have to be in that person to be in front of that person to forgive them. You could write a letter. Who uh, who shall ever love? Lo, oh, sorry, Proverbs seventeen nineteen seventeen nineteen. Sorry, um, it's, it's talking about whoever shall love, and then it's talking about forgiveness of a parent in this version. I know forgiveness is hard. It's, it's not easier. It's easier said than done. You know, I had to get over forgiving. You know my mom for things that happened when I was a kid, my, um, my family, you know, different, so many different things. But through that, I've learned to just love my family, my blood relatives as they are. I, I have some good family. Are they perfect? No. Are any of us perfect? No. But I sure I've, I'm sure I've done some things to them just as much as I've, they've done to me. So we all have to um, learn to forgive. Nobody's perfect. And through that forgiveness, I can just love them as they are and where they are. When someone does something to upset you, it can be hard to let go and move on. But harboring frustration or ill will towards somebody else is actually just a punishment for ourselves. Luckily, it's like riding a, a motorcycle and then falling over and over and over and again into the cement or the gravel and just getting that embedded in your skin. It just festers and festers and festers until it gets gooey pus and you have to go get it cleaned out. And, and you can go to a doctor, get it cleaned out, but you fall again. And it's only going to keep happening until you're like, God, please help and let me forgive. I need to forgive them so I can forgive myself and go on. Luckily, there are Bible verses about forgiveness helping through that very situation. More, a majority of them are, are about how we must forgive, least we um, be not forgiven. And I know that's hard, especially with things that happen to people. And you're like, this person just, why should I forgive them? Because God forgives us no matter what our transitions. Forgiveness doesn't necessarily mean that a person is not guilty of whatever they did. Hear me. People have to account for what they did. Forgiveness doesn't mean forgetting. Rather, forgiveness means letting go of the pain the incident is causing us. It, like my friend, um, his name's Dan, he lives in Chicago. He said, don't let he said a bad word. F and people live in your head rent free. Don't let them live in there. We forgive to give others peace of mind and in hopes that one day, oops, and in hopes that one day someone will return a favor if we ever offend them. So, and I know somebody might say, oh my God, I was molested. Why do I have to forgive? You're forgiving for you so you can get over them so they're not in your mind, your spirit, your body, and you're turning and churning. What they did was wrong. Here, re- Listen to that part again. So whether a family member starts an argument, a child throws a fit, or a friend isn't there during a neat time of need, the Bible helps us to see the importance of forgiveness for transgressions small and large. Rely on these passages whenever you need a reminder that holding on to the grudge doesn't serve anyone. I like that. It's really good. Okay. I'm looking for the little Bible verses. Okay, here we go. And then we're going to go on to why the steps on forgiveness. Numbers 14, 18. The Lord is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, forgiving inequity and transgressions, but he will by no means clear the guilty. See, God will take care of it. The good news, God will handle those who have wronged us where he does not let the guilty go unpunished. He doesn't, believe me. may not be on here on earth, but everybody has to count for everything they did. Numbers 15, 28. And the priest shall make atonement before the Lord for the person who makes a mistake when he sins unintentionally to make atonement for him, and he shall be forgiven. The good news, our priest is also responsible for obtaining forgiveness for us from God, especially for accidental mistakes. And this was in the Old Testament. Jesus Christ came. Um, that's why Jesus came. Um, as it says, in, to bridge a gap between the Old and New Testament. Now we don't have to go to another man. We just go to the um, Lord Jesus Christ and ask him for forgiveness ourselves. All right. And then we're going to read one more verse and then going back to um, living free. Through forgiveness and understanding that hurt people hurt people, but you're only hurting yourself more when you don't forgive. Luke 6:37. Judge not and you will not be judged. Condemn not, and you will not be condemned. Forgiven, you will be forgiven. The good news, if you're mindful of 
of our own behaviors will reap the benefits. All right, and this part here, oh, I'm sorry, the 12 Bible verses, because I like to give credit to where I found the information. I'm so sorry, I was about to take the credit from myself. This was from um, womansday.com slash life slash inspirational dash stories, and it's 12 Bible verses about forgiveness, which is a difficult, which is a difficult thing to master. It surely is. Let me tell you, forgiveness is not easy because you forgive somebody and it just comes right back to you. Forgive them, it comes back to you, and you just keep going on and on and on until one day you realize you can't do that. Okay, now this one is, called, is from the website livingfree.org, and I found when hurt people hurt you, how to respond when people hurt you. What comes to your mind in response to the questions, who has hurt you? Who has offended you, who has lied to you or about you, and who has betrayed you? Oh, my God, we can make a short list of that. I can think of a whole bunch of people on my fingers right now. And let me tell you, um, I'm not going from the story. I'll I'll come back to this part. But I'll tell you, I was sitting at Bible study, and I was – and we were going around about, you know, things that people had done and, you know, nice things. And, you know, and I was – I my heart was sort of kind of – not bitter, but a little frustrated with people. And as I went through and I started to study with Beth Moore, I just realized, you know what, you can't hold on to this. Every day you have to allow God to work in your heart and not hold on to even the littlest of things that people did to you. Maybe minute to you, but if you keep letting it go and go, it's going to acerbate itself into something big. And at the end of the study, I had a better attitude. Um, Our family, our parents, friends, work, church people hurt us too. Don't get that wrong, and that's the truth. Um, friendship has been shattered because of cruel words are being betrayed. Hollywood makes blockbuster movies with a simple story. Lying, the hero of the movie, is a hurt victim of injustice and throughout the movie seeks to recover what is rightfully his or hers. When we finally get to the end, we cheer the hero's revenge. All right, go for it. The evil person deserves it. Yes, they do. But are we going to come in a crime to help, to help somebody? I mean, to have um, revenge on somebody? How is that going to help us? But God, but how does God want us to respond? Whether as a person, as a family member, or enemy, how should we react? Well, that's a good question. I know with me, I used to react like, on, okay, God, I'm going to need you. Let's, let's just strike them dead. But that's not what God wants. Prayer is the number one thing. And it says, do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord, Romans 12:19. NIV, just in case you guys were confused. So God, how does God want us to, to respond to those who hurt me? Luke 26, 27 to 36 speaks to the issue with great t- detail. In some areas of Christian life, we struggle to find out how God wants to respond. This is not the case here. God's instructions are detailed. Jesus said, but I tell you, hear me. Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. Luke 27 to 28 NIV. In the following verses, Jesus gives examples on how to treat those who hurt you. And he concludes with be merciful, just as the Father is merciful. Talk about an impossible standard. All right. Love your enemies. Why? Because when you love people unconditionally, no matter how much they hurt you, it's not saying, oh, come on, I want to have coffee with you. Let's go to Starbucks and go on vacation. Nope, you're not saying that. You are loving them how God would love them because you know what? At the end of the day, you are choosing to have love unconditionally and allow God to, to live in your heart. So we look at some of the parts of, of the world where um, we see on the TV the Arabs and Jews in a cycle of violence, hatred, and death. But who fits the label? What, but who fits the label of any man in your life? Many of those who, who come to Teen Challenge for help, are for this, and this is based on an article from Teen Challenge, are from a background of violence and anger. A huge percent of them have been deeply damaged as children. Juan's mother gave him away to, to an uncle because she didn't want him. The uncle raised Juan but cruelly abused him. Eventually, Juan ended up in a series of foster homes and jails before coming to teen, teen challenge. So who were the enemies in his life? Well, we could say his mother, his uncle. Rita came into a home with a, mo- with a mom who didn't want her. She, too, was given away and ended up in foster homes. One foster mother would discipline her by putting a plastic bag over her head and hold her until Rita passed out. Sexual abuse was also part of her child experience. How long is her list of enemies? Do you guys see what's going on here? 
all of us have been through a lot and different things on different levels. And we all have to learn to forgive because forgiveness is for you, not for that person. And these things, and these situations can be hurt. And I know you might be a wife who's being abused and being part of a domestic violence, and you're like, God, why am I here? And But you know you need to leave. Don't be scared. Reach out to a shelter. Call 211. Call 911 and get away from them. For many, of, for many of us, the definition of an enemy is a former friend. You were in a relationship with someone that should have been a positive friendship, but they betrayed you. And sometimes we don't see the betrayal until after a couple of times, and I can attest to this. I have a person who was in my life, and I put quotes around friends. Um, they're a nice person, don't get me wrong, and they you know, are known in a community, but they always make promises to me, always. And no matter what it is, they always break them. I've just come to realize, you know what, I don't dislike or hate that person. I pray for them and I pity them because for some reason they can't feel that they can't, can't tell me that they don't want to be in my life or be part of my life. And so in a way, I was forcing that, and I'm just going to say, you know what, it's okay. That's okay. Let it go where it goes. And Jesus says, here's how I want you to respond to the enemy today. Love them. This does that mean this, this does not make sense. You say, why should I love them? Look at the damage this person caused in my life, and now you just want me to say to love that person? If the enemy has to come to beg for my forgiveness, if they really change, I'll still find it hard to forgive them, wasn't it? But what about the enemy? But what about the enemy who has not changed? They're still the same evil person hurt me deeply. I used to ask God that all the time. Or maybe your enemy is a Christian, perhaps even a pastor or some other church leader. And, and we always want to say, oh, no, the church, whether we're a Christian or we're, it's a religion. We act like churches don't hurt us or, or religious organizations don't hurt us. They do. They're human. And they run things like a business sometimes. Why should I love this hypocrite? They should know better. They're a leader. They should have um, been showing me love instead of betraying me. In response to all, Jesus simply says, love your enemies. How can I love my enemies? Praying. God knows our weakness, and he promised to provide the power. The promise of 2 Timothy 1.7 offers great hope. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power, of love, and self-discipline. God will give you the power to love your enemies the way he wants you to love them. Because there's a Bible verse, and I forget where it is, um, but it says, you know, through love, you reap heaping coals on your enemy's head. I sort of kind of like that because I was like, wow, that's a lot. The first love is trend trait relates to, well, to enemies. Love is patient. How can I express patience? Let's look at it from the other end. When you show patience toward the person, you're expressing God's love. So does it mean I let the person keep on abusing me and not respond? Not at all. As much as in our power, we need to put in place boundaries that keep us safe from the damage our enemies trying to bring into our lives. We need to seek help from others who can assist in providing you safety. You're not alone. The wife is being beat by her husband should call the police to simply stay in that place Abuse, I'm just, I'm just being patient. Doing what God says, this is not God's way to press love to that abuser. You don't have to die for that. The patience is being trust toward our enemies and what we think and what you say is normal. And to lash out with words or at least our thoughts toward the other person has hurt us. Love can be shown by not going down the path of revenge even in our thoughts. Second, First Corinthians states, love is kind. Perhaps the most important prayer you need to say, God, how do you how do you want me to show kindness to this person? God gives me the power to show kindness to this person because in my heart, I simply do not have the desire. God gives us the strength. The list is in 13 goes on for each trait. Okay? God will give you the power to change if you're willing to change. Do good to those who hate. Calls us to action. You know, just keep going. His divine power has given us everything for Nate for life. I'm not making this candy coated because people have done wrong. You need to stay away from abusers, from molesters, but you have to know that forgiveness and unconditional love is the way to go. It'll relieve your heart. Don Swatzlander, the director of Teen Challenge in Buffalo, New York, recently told me of an experience with a lady who hated their ministry. She was a well-known advocate for persons who had a complaint in their city. She had been protesting Teen Teen Challenge moved to a new location where they could expand their ministry. One day, oops, so at the end, oh my gosh, I lost, I lost the story. 
one day at a community meeting and saw this lady come limping into the meeting. God spoke to my heart and told me to pray for her, stated Don. So I bowed my head and breathed a prayer to God for her. Instantly in my heart responded, no, you go pray for her. So at the end of the meeting, I went up where she was sitting and asked if I could pray for her. She was willing, so I placed my hand on her shoulder and prayed a very simple prayer for her. A few weeks later, Dawn saw this same woman at another meeting. When she entered the room, she loudly called out, I love you, Dawn stated. I was not paying much attention to her since she was always talking loudly, but she repeated this and came right up to me, threw her arms around me, and gave me a big grandma hug. God had touched her not only as she experienced God's healing physically, but God had touched her on her chair, Dawn. From that day on, she was a friend and advocate for teen challenge in any, any issue related to our ministry. God can do wonders. Sometimes he uses our hurts to heal other people. Bless those who curse you. Just continue to pray for them. You don't have to hang with them. Just let God have it. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse those who who will curse you. Genesis 12, 3. God sees what you're doing. He will reward you. Pray for those who mistreat you. Prayer is the most amazing thing. King David prayed when he was being chased by Saul. Joseph, a lifetime of hurt by his family and friends, but he kept on praying and kept on going. And at the end, God um, made a gift for him. All right. So I hope that tonight that you guys learn that, you know what? The things that people do to us, hurt people do hurt people. But you don't have to um, just, you don't have to. Um, be what, do what they do. You don't have to become them. You don't have to become another person who is a person. And you know what? Life is not fair. And we don't know why we go through things. Each of us go through something different. Some people don't seem to go through anything. But you know what? God is in charge. Luke 17, 4. If he sins against you seven times in a day, turn to you seven times saying, repent, you must forgive him. The good news, there's no maximum amount of forgiveness we can bestow because God did the ultimate forgiveness by getting on the cross. First John 1 John 1.9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The good news, we must admit our own mistakes in order to be forgiven. So you didn't do anything to this person, for example, but that's fine. But you still have other things that you did, so just remember. And then we're going to end with this one. Psalm 86.5, for you, O oh Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in steadfast love to all who call upon you. The good news, God is waiting for us to ask for his help and he will be there with love and forgiveness. I hope that you guys enjoyed today's show, and I hope that it impacted your heart. Thank you for listening. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions or you want to send me any emails, please send them to cvwtdiva at gmail.com. Remember, you're wanted, you're loved, and you are amazing. We're going to end with Sheena. Flashing lights in a backyard table Torn jeans and a quarter inch cable We point our speakers to the moon Blankets that we're laying on rooftops Taking shots in the parking lot We'll fly away like air balloons I feel it high Only for it's what I